In this video, we are going to learn the technique of finding the distance between two moving objects using the concept of relative motion. We shall examine a few cases of motion which are listed here on this screen. The first case is about two objects which are moving with constant velocity and we shall find the distance between them after a little time duration. The second case is about two objects which are moving again with constant velocity, but initially they are moving towards each other and after a certain time they begin to move away from each other. So, the distance between them initially becomes shorter and shorter and after that time t minimum it begins to grow larger and larger. We have to find the shortest distance between the two objects and the next case that we are going to look at will be the case of objects which are having variable velocity variable with respect to time, but the two objects are subjected to the same constant acceleration. Example could be two projectiles moving under the influence of gravity. For such a situation, we will find out the distance between these two objects. For all these cases, there is a common factor which you would notice and that common factor is that in all these cases, the relative velocity of one object with respect to the other is constant with time. So, let us get started and we will move on to the case number 1. So, as you notice here in this diagram, there are two objects located here and here. These are the coordinates of the two points where the two objects are located. Their velocities are V a which is 20 meters per second and V b in this direction is 10 square root 2 meters per second and we have to find the distance between them 5 seconds later. So, after 5 seconds the object A moves to this location and object B moves to this point 5 seconds later and this is the distance that we have to find out. It is obvious that the simple and straight forward method is to find out the coordinates of this point and coordinates of this point and calculate the, the distance between these two locations, but that is not an elegant way of going about finding the distance. So, what we are going to do is to find the distance from relative velocity concept. So, let us first write V a and V b in vector form. The i component is 20 cosine 60 degrees and the j component is 20 sine 60 degrees and that will work out to 10 i plus 10 root 3 j and similarly and this will be the i component of V b minus 10 square root 2 cosine 45 degrees because this angle also is 45 degrees and the j component is 10 root 2 sine 45 degrees and therefore, this will simplify to minus 10 i plus 10 j and therefore, the velocity of a with respect to b would be v a minus v b and if you subtract this from this, you will get 20 i plus 10 root 3 minus 1 j and we find out the magnitude of this velocity vector and that is equal to square root of the i component square plus square of the j component square and that will work out to 21.3 meters per second. This distance which is the relative displacement between the two objects 5 seconds later is equal to the relative displacement at t is equal to 0 that is the initial displacement plus velocity of a with respect to b times the time t which is 5 seconds in this problem. So, we express r a oblique b at t is equal to 0 which is 4 i minus 3 j this vector is 4 i minus 3 j plus the relative velocity of a with respect to b we just found out. So, this expression times 5 and now adding the two 
vectors we get 104i plus 33.6j and the magnitude of this vector would turn out to be square root of i component square plus j component square and this will be equal to 109.3 meters. So, this is relatively simple and straightforward problem, but there is a word of caution. This is a vector equation in which you express all these terms in vector form. You should not put this equation in scalar form. What I am trying to tell you is that the magnitude of this distance r a b magnitude will not be equal to magnitude of r a b at t is equal to 0 plus v a b times t. This is a scalar equation and this will not work. r a b is if this is 4 and this is 3 meters, so this will be 5 meters. So, r a b at t is equal to 0 is 5 meters plus v a b we already computed is 21.3 meters per second multiplied by 5 and this will work out to something else. It will not be 109.3. So, this is a wrong method and you should not attend this. So, to find out the relative displacement, you should put these quantities in vector form. Now, we move on to case 2. In this problem, we have two cars. Car A is traveling from west to east at a velocity of 40 kilometers per hour and car B is traveling from north to south with a velocity of 20 kilometers per hour. These two roads intersect each other at this point and they are normal to each other, they are perpendicular to each other. So, at a certain instant, this car reaches the intersection point, but this car is 50 kilometers away at this instant. And obviously, after a little time, this car will move ahead and this car will approach the intersection. We have to find the distance between these two cars, which is the shortest. We also have to find the time when this shortest distance would be reached. So, at t is equal to 0, car b is here which is 50 kilometers away from the intersection and car a is at this point. Few minutes later, let us say 5 minutes later, car b reaches at this point and car a reaches this point. So, the distance between them would be this distance. A little later, this car would reach here, let us say this car would reach here. So, this distance would be like this. So, the distance between the two cars is changing and we have to find the shortest distance. Let us say at time is equal to t, the distance between the two cars is this and let us denote it as L. So, L can be expressed in terms of t like this. L square is equal to 50 minus 20 t whole square. We have this right angle triangle, the hypotenuse is L, therefore this square is equal to this side is square and this side is 50 minus 20 t because th this car will travel a distance of 20 t. This distance will be 20 t n time t. Similarly, this distance the car A will travel will be equal to 40 t. So, 50 minus 20 t whole square plus 40 t whole square will be equal to L square. So, if you draw this function, it will look like this. On the y axis, we have L and on x axis we have t. It will look something like this, like a parabola. This initially at t is equal to 0, this is 50 kilometers. This point is 50 kilometers from the origin. Gradually, this 
will reduce, it will come down and then begin to increase, increase like this. This is the graph for this equation. So, we have to find this L minimum, this is L minimum and this is the time T minimum when the distance become the smallest. So, I am sure you are familiar with differentiation and finding the minimum and maximum. So, what we do is we take the first derivative d L upon d T and set it equal to 0 for minimum and we will get a value of T minimum. I am not going to solve it here, but you can work out yourself T minimum would come out to half an hour and if you plug in this value here in this equation, L minimum will work out to 44.8 kilometers. So, that is the minimum distance. So, initially it was 50 kilometers at t is equal to 0, then it reduces, it reduces to 44.8 kilometers in so much time in half an hour and then it increases further. So, I gave you an overview of how this problem can be solved with calculus, but the focus of this video is on relative velocity and so now I am going to show you how the same problem can be solved with the concept of relative motion. So, here in this picture I have drawn the relative velocity of car A with respect to B. As you can see V A is in this direction, V B is pointing towards south and therefore, minus V B will point towards north and we add these two vectors and we get this vector as V A minus V B and is equal to the relative velocity A with respect to B. So, this is the path of car A as perceived by car B. Car B remains stationary that is from the basic concept of relative motion. So, the relative velocity of A with respect to B is V A minus V B, V A is 40 i minus V B is minus 20 j because our i is in this direction and j is in this direction. Therefore, this will work out to 40 i plus 20 j and the magnitude of this relative velocity would work out to 20 root 5 kilometers per hour. As I said before, this is the path of A as seen by B and B remains stationary at point P which is 50 kilometers from the origin and therefore, the shortest distance between P and the path of A would be the perpendicular distance between this point and this line. So, we draw a perpendicular and that point becomes Q and therefore, P Q becomes the shortest distance between the two cars and how much is PQ? We can find that out from this right angle triangle. This angle is theta and since this is 90 degrees, this angle will be 90 minus theta and therefore, this angle will be theta and therefore, PQ will be equal to OP cosine theta. OP we know is 50 kilometers. If tan theta is 1 by 2, cosine theta will be 2 upon root 5 and this will work out to 44.8 kilometers. It is the same result that we found out from calculus and the time taken to reach this point Q. Car A is starting at t is equal to 0 from O and it is moving along this path with respect to car B and it is moving at a velocity V A with respect to B. So, to cover this distance O Q, the time required to cover this distance O Q will be O Q divided by the magnitude of that relative velocity. O Q is O Q is O P sin theta and V A B we have already calculated the magnitude is 20 root 5. We plug in the value of sin theta here in this expression and O P is 50 kilometers. So, this will work out to 0 0.5 hours. So, that is our answer. So, this is the answer.
So hopefully you would find this method of relative velocity better than the other one, which is calculus based. This video has become over 15 minutes long. So I'll cut it off now and cover the remaining part about variable velocity in the next video. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.